What's going on guys? It's me, the Dumb Fanatic, with a webcam. I bet you weren't expecting that. Today I'm bringing you the team builder for our week one game uh, in the NSTL um, versus Zydro or K Kiroki or Kikori or Dot or whatever he wants to go by these days. Um, but being Ben, uh, oh sorry, in his, I think it's Twin, no, Treasure Town Torchix. Shout out to Mystery Dungeon. Um, yes, me and Ben go way back, mainly from Smash. I think he followed me for Pokemon, and then we both really got into Smash. Been to a few Smash tournaments before together. Um, great guy. Love him to bits. Um, however, that friendship has to be put aside, because when it comes to draft format, we are only here for wins, and um, I did actually record my draft analysis earlier. Um, and hopefully you guys have seen that. If not, I will try and remember to link it below. I'm also undecided as to whether I want to have separate team builder videos or I want to put this at the start of the battle video. Um, because it's showdown, the battle video highlights don't tend to be too long. So I'm leaning towards putting them together. Um, and I'm also undecided whether I'll put webcam in with the game. There's not much reason to really. There's probably not much reason for the team um, builder to be honest, but I needed space. I had space to fill in OBS so I was like sure let's just put webcam I've got a new webcam to go with other things like Overwatch videos so um, yeah might as well use it while I can so um, yes as you can see drafts are right beneath me here I'm on this no this side and Ben is on that side so just in case you didn't see my uh, draft analysis we've got Landorus Varian, Celesteela, Nihilego, um, Rebombi, Slowbro, Amoongus, Ordino, Rotom Heat and Mega Altaria Ben's draft um, is a bit odd. Um, ben has got league experience, however he hasn't played 7th gen, so he doesn't know what's good and bad, which is fair enough. Um, Ben's draft is Celebi, Azumarill, Gliscor, Sylveon, Infernape, Rotom Mo, Mega Sableye, Porygon Z, Ampipom, and Warwild. So, still a really scary draft. Um, now, in team building, the first thing that jumped out to me was Azumarill. Um, while I do have Amoongus and Slowbro, sort of combined, which can deal with the play rough and um, liquidation side of things together fairly. fairly. Um, if he has belly drum with ice punch and play rough, um, he pretty much just destroys my team right here and he can run Aqua Jet as uh, something to outspeed my faster mons. So um, Z belly drum or just belly drum with a berry was something I was absolutely terrified going into this game. If he was banded, I was less terrified. Um, it's just that I have to try and predict what movie he's going to go for. It should be quite easy considering like if I have um, Landorus in, he'll probably go for Ice Punch. If I have Salcedo in, he'll probably go for Ice Punch or Liquidation. So um, I, I should be able to play around um, what mons I bring in on that thing. But Azumarill was the standout threat to me here. Um, another thing was the um, Ambipom and Infernape because it outspeeds my whole draft bar my Rebombi, uh, Rebombi both of them, unless I bring Sticky Webs. Now, originally, um, oh, I'll go over my team in a minute, but um, you can see my Rebombi set anyway because it's just kind of sitting there. Um, originally, I had Sticky Web on this thing, and then I thought, actually, if I bring Choice Scarf on Rebombi, it means I can um, outspeed anything at plus one. And he has lots of things which can set up speed. Um, with Z, obviously, Z rain on Azumarill's potential. Um, you could bring Z, something like that, on Porygon 2 for the speed boost. Um, pretty sure Gliscor gets agility, although well, that probably outspeed me then still. Um, you know, it'll you know, outspeed any Scarfed Ambipoms, outspeed any Scarfed um, Infernape. So, Infernape, Ambipom, and Azumarill were probably the most scary things for me. Um, the rest of the team I wasn't too worried about. He hasn't really got any good answers to fairies. Um, and I do have two fairies in Rebombi and Mega Altaria. So I felt really confident going into uh, sort of team prep this week. So they're the drafts. You can make your own sort of summations up about what you think about team matchup. I think personally I had a really good matchup minus the Azumarill. That thing could tear me a new one depending on the set he bought. But let's just go over the uh, teams, uh, or sorry, my team that I'm bringing into the game. Now, I did build this about five weeks ago. So if I don't remember my exact reasons, I do apologize, but that's the reason why. Um, first up, like you've seen for like the last few minutes anyway, we have got Rebombi. And I've already said it's Choice Scarf because um, it outspeeds this whole draft um, and it does, you know, kind of stop things that are at plus one. So for example, um, if he doesn't have Aqua Jet on Azumarill, 
then potentially something there. If it's Choice Scarf and Fernape, I can bring this thing in, kill it with Moonblast if it's taken a few Stealth Rock switch ins. Um, and just generally outspeed his whole team. Like I said, he doesn't really have many things for fair reasons draft, so there's not really any issue with me just coming in and clicking Moonblast. Um, I mean, I have Pollen Puff purely for the Celebi. I think that's the only reason I needed it. Um, if it's not the only reason, there's only one or two other Pokemon that will get hit by it that don't get hit by Moonblast. Um, U-turn is there for momentum. That and Landorus um, work really well together with U-turn core, um, and that'll put me on the front foot throughout the whole game. And then I have Energy Ball. Um, not entirely sure what for, uh, what it was. Let me just bring Ben's. Uh, uh, like my microphone's blocking my computer screen. It's horrendous. Um, what did he have? He has. I think it's purely for the Azumarill, to be honest with you. But um, Moonblast and Pollen Puff will two hit KO. Or Moonblast will two hit KO and Azumarill. Um, anyway, regardless. So Energy Ball's just kind of there in case Azumarill does start to get a bit out of hand. Um, next up, we. Oh, sorry, the EVs. The EVs, as you can see, 184. I should go over the EVs. Um, 183 is the max a Amber Pom, Jolly, Max Speed, and Pom can hit. So that's all I needed. Gonna chuck the rest in special attack or max special attack, sorry, and then I'll put the rest in HP and defense to, to try and be bulky. I have got shield dust, which does prevent you actually being um, flinched by fake out, which I think many people will know. So the better I can take a fake out from a potential amber pom, the better. Um, and I can just kill that thing and remove last because amber pom's pretty frail. And if I don't kill it, it's gonna be low. So um, there are the EVs behind uh, Amber Pom, not Amber Pom, Rebombi, I should say. Next up, we've got AC130, the Celesteela. Um, Celesteela is just a huge threat to any team, really. Um, I've gone for a sort of like a, an offensive variant. Ben doesn't really have much in his draft for an offensive or a defensive variant, but I felt like um, bringing an offensive one because there are quite a few setup opportunities on his team. Um, as we've seen, he's got Gliscor, Sylveon, because the best thing Sylveon has is a hidden power of some sort. Um, Gliscor, immune to Earthquake, he'll have to have Stone Edge, um, and obviously I resist its Flying Stab. And then finally, um, uh, what's the other one? Infernape with this Ockerberry. He might not expect it. If he's Choice Scarfed, then I think he'll still outspeed me, which is a bummer. If he's not Choice Scarfed, then Celesteel is inside and ready to kill things. Um, so we've got Heavy Slam, Acrobatics, or Totemize, and Earthquake. Literally, uh, Earthquake is just there for the more while. Otherwise, Acrobatics and Heavy Slam is enough. Um, I am obviously enough attack, so I get the Beast Boost in attack each time. Um, and after all, Totemize, I reach 206 speed. Um, I think I went to 103 um, Jolly to outspeed Adamant Max Speed Azumarill, because uh, I can take an Aqua Jet, a Choice Band Aqua Jet, from an Adamant Azumarill, that's absolutely fine. And then I'll just have to get chip with Heavy Slam, and after that it'll just be me wearing it down with uh, Rocky Helmet on my um, Slowbro, which you'll see in a minute, and my uh, Amoongus. Um, but if I do get set up and I do get a kill with Heavy Slam first, then that Azumarill dies. And like I said, Azumarill is a huge threat to my team in this game. Um, but otherwise, he, he doesn't really have much. The best answer he has sort of defensively is Gliscor, but I can chip that thing down more than he can chip me down. Um, he doesn't really have anything that can hit me other than he might have potentially like Whirlwind. I don't even know if he gets Whirlwind, Whirlwind or Raw, some sort of phasing move um, that he can hit me with. But otherwise, like he doesn't really have much of an answer to Celesteela. But that's nothing to Ben's team because most teams don't have an answer to Celesteela. So um, yeah, the, the speed's there because of that. The max attack just for power and obviously the beast boost and attack as well. I don't really need the bulk with the Berry. I think I take about half from like a choice scarf flare blitz or something um and if he's not scarfed then i'll outspeed him and kill him next time if he is scarfed well that's unfortunate but i can play around that rather easily with my Slowbro um and my amoongus actually Slowbro is just a very good answer to um infernape as a whole so uh that's pretty much self stealing not much else to really say about that pretty straightforward mom next up we have got lando t again i've kind of gone for an offensive build on this uh this landorus um, mainly because, again, he, he doesn't have many good answers outside of Gliscor. So now Gliscor is going to get worn down by everything else on my team. And once uh, it's gone, then uh, Lando is going to have fun. Main goal is I'm going to lead with this turn one. I've already decided with this um, and get Stealth Rocks up. Because if he doesn't lead with his, um, his what's it called, Mega Sableye, I want to get Stealth Rocks up. Um, he might not bring Hazard Removal on his Gliscor um, because... 
he has the magic bounce and he might think that will deter me from bringing it. I debated bringing Nihilego as well over the Mega Rotara, which I'll go over a bit later on, um, for the Toxic Spikes for that thing, but I realised I have two fairies and that should be able to handle a Mega Sableye well enough because the rest of my team can't really deal with it too well unless I do get set up with the Celesteel. Um, but yeah, we've got Earthquake Fly, U-Turn, Stealth Rocks. Z-Fly, he hasn't really got a great switch in again, outside of Gliscor and Earthquake, obviously uh, Gliscor's immune to. He does have the Rotom, which is also weak, uh, immune to the Earthquake, but again, Fly will do neutral damage and Z-Fly will do a hefty chunk to it. Um, but like I said, Stealth Rocks is the main aim of this thing, and Intimidate, actually Intimidate will be really useful for me to try and take on that Azumarill uh, if things get too out of hand. But yeah, I didn't really feel like I needed Bulky. Um, I am max speed for a reason. I really cannot remember what that reason is. Um, but the main, you know, sort of reason this thing is here is Stealth Rocks and U-Turn, again, forming a nice U-Turn core with that Rebombi um, will be huge for me this game, keeping the momentum going, because I don't want to let Azumarill in for free on one of my, um, or, or something like Rebombi, um, or even this thing. Um, but Intimidate, I can take a hit after, you know, from an Aqua Jet, and he can't outspeed me unless he's Scarfed. Um, and Scarfed Waterfall at minus one. I don't know if that'll kill me or not, and I should be able to revenge or at least weaken uh, an Azumarill with Earthquake or Z Fly. You can probably even kill it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Z Fly is just there as a nuke, and Earthquake is just what you run on Lando T, really. Um, but I really don't remember what the max speed is for. Um, there was some reason, possibly Porygon Z. I don't know what. I think it's 80 speed, actually, off the top of my head. There was a reason, I've just forgotten what it is. Um, next up, we have got the Slowbro. Um, with Rocky Helmet Regenerator again, you know, this Ordino and Amoongus form part of my Regenerator core. Um, we've got an Ice Beam Scald Slack off Psyshock. Originally I had Raw, because Showdown told me Raw was illegal on this thing, and then I realised it's not. Apparently it's not. I could have sworn it was, but I went with Showdown and I changed it to Psyshock, and to be honest it doesn't really make much of a difference in the battle as you will see. Ice Beam, he's got quite a few things that are don't like ice. He's got the Rotom Mo, he's got the Gliscor, and he's got the Celebi, so that's my best way of hitting it. It was that or Flamethrower, and honestly, Ice Beam helped deal with more of his team than uh, Flamethrower or Fire Blast. Um, Scald is just Scald, you know. Burn, burn Chance is nice, even if he wants to switch a Zoom roll in on it, that is his water switching. Um, he has to run the risk of a burn, which probably isn't worth it. Uh, if he wants to belly drum, then I'll just click Psy Shock and I will weaken that thing uh, while I can. Uh, and, and Rocky Helmet will obviously mean that he'll be hurting himself um, over and over again with you know any physical attack that comes into me. Again, this is like my a really good way of me dealing with the Gliscor, which opens up things, uh, opens up space for Celesteela and for um, Lando. And if I am not able to kill the Gliscor, then I have got an actual chance to set up on the Gliscor with my. Um, Altari, which we'll see in a moment, and the Sour Seed, like we've already gone over. Um, but you know, I can once I reveal Ice Beam, he knows he can't keep Gliscor in whenever I have a Slowbro in, and that either then means I can then predict his switch and try and get initiative, or just get a nice scald um, potential burn as well off on anything on his team. Psy Shock is there because obviously it's the best thing to hit the uh, Sylveon, in case he's like especially bulky Sylveon. Really not expecting Sylveon too much because I have got Sour Stealer. Um, and that thing cannot touch Celesteela, and it's like a, a big opportunity for me to set up if he does bring it. Um, and I've also got a move this while, you know, um, Sylveon does get Psy Shock, it still doesn't do too much unless it's like Choice Specs um, to my Amoongus if he locks himself into Psy Shock. And I go into Slowbro and we, we play that game. So, um, yeah, Slowbro's looking really solid as a defensive mon against uh, against Ben's team. Again, I've already mentioned he is in the Fernape, I need to check for that. Celebi could be an issue for it, but we've got... Well, actually, Celebi could be an issue for both my defensive mons, as you can see, um, with a combination of Grass and Psychic um, sort of stab. I would be able to take hits, I'm confident of I could, I could take a hit with my Amoongus. Couldn't really do too much back to it though. Um, but I do have my Celesteela, which resists both the stabs. I do have my uh, Rebombi, which does obviously switch into Grass Moves. And I do have my Mega Altari, which switches into Grass Moves again. So um, while it does sort of take on my defensive core if he decides to bring it, um, I've got things that can cover it. But yeah, pr pretty standard as you can see, EV-wise as well, max HP, max defense, because my Amoongus is uh, more specifically ev to go along with this one to try and take special hits and to deal with the Azumarill as well. So that is the Slowbro. Next up, we are going to go to the Amoongus. It has got um, Black Sludge, 
Um, I did debate going for double Rocky Helmet because I have got that regenerate and I have got recovery on both of them. We've got Clear Smog to stop any setup, so on the Azumarill and the Mega Sableye. Um, I do have, obviously, uh, well, I have got a Fairy on Physical and Special in case he does try and set up um, on with Calm Minds. So, you know, I have got a failsafe of um, Altaria on one side, and if he doesn't set up, then I have got Moonblast, which will hit like a truck as well. Um, against that thing on my Rebombi. Um, but yeah, Clear Smog to take that way any hazard in sort of games. Giga Drain is just there for a bit of chip damage. It won't do much to his team. Uh, the Synthesis and the Hidden Power Ground. Now, I had Hidden Power Ground for the Infernape because I feel like Infernape's a very safe switching onto this thing. But in hindsight, looking back, um, Blitz Gore is also a huge issue for this thing. Now, I think I've probably gone Hidden Power Ground because I think Infernape could be more of an issue for my team rather than the. Um, Gliscor, because I have got ways of dealing with the Gliscor in my Slowbro pretty safely. I can, you know, uh, Rebombi will do massive damage because it, I'm assuming it'll be Fizz Death and not specially defensive, because um, it will help take on the um, Hando T. Um, I feel like Hidden Power Ground's probably better for me to get a big hit on that Infernape and limit what it can do, so limit its Flare Blitzers, um, limit its Stealth Rock Switchings. Because then, um, obviously, it threatens out. If it is Scarfed, it could potentially threaten my Rebombi, it could threaten. Amoongus could threaten my Celeste Dealer. Um, if it has Hidden Power Ice, it can then also hit my, um, my, Alt I keep forgetting its name, Altaria, that's the one. Uh, Amoongus and Lander is super effective. Um, uh, like, it, it wouldn't need, I mean, Hidden Power wouldn't do much to um, Altaria once Mega Evolved or Amoongus anyway, um, but it could be something for the, uh, the, Landorus, and obviously it can get the Iron Fist Wonder Punch, but it could do it could do some damage to Slowking, but he not Slowking Slowbro, but he would be taking the residual uh, Rocky Helmet damage, and I have a chance to get School off on him as well, so which would kill him outright or Psy Shock. So um, yeah, this just gels really well with Slowbro, apart from the Celebi issue which I mentioned. Um, the EVs, I think I'm mostly Fizz Death. Um, I say mostly Fizz Death. I'm more invested in Fizz Death. Because of the Azumarill, I can take the water and the fairy moves really well. But there is the matter of the fact that it does get Ice Punch. And that's where the link up between um, the Slowbro and the Amoongus come together really well. And the Spadef is there just to be kind of more of a Spadef. Uh, especially bulky Mon. Um, just because I needed some special bulk. I don't really have much uh, other than natural bulk of Mega Altaria and Celesteela. Um... So that's, that's the main reason why I've gone for this kind of build. It's a nice check to a lot of his mons. But like I said, Celebi could still be an issue to this and the Slowbro. So, with all of that in mind, and mainly the Mega Sableye in mind, because if he does set up like Calm Minds, there's not much I can do. Um, we have got Mega Altaria. Now, I've never used this thing before. Not even in like standard mons, I don't think. Um, it's a really cool mon, and it's actually a mon that can do a ridiculous amount of damage to Ben's team. Like I've already said, he doesn't have a fairy switch in and he hasn't got a fairy resist other than more while um i don't believe um i really don't think more while's coming there is a chance it could come for altaria um but i would be able to take on that more while with slowbro or landorus or even celesteela because heavy slam's still going to do like over half because it's neutral um like, I have things to take on this more while if he does bring it. Um, but otherwise, I just click Dragon Dance and return and just kind of kill something on his team. I've got set up opportunity on the Gliscor, because I think he'll be probably be running Protect to scout for Z Fly, because that's the best way I can hit it with Landorus if I set up. Um, and then obviously, once I've used that, I can't then kill it with Fly, because it was Protect every time I'm going to hit him. Um, I expect I'll have Protect. He might have Stealth Rock or Defog, depending on, you know, what he wants to bring. Um, and that leaves him with, like, two moves. Now, he could potentially bring Earthquake, which I imagine he will, um, cause, just because it's Strong Stab. And that could do some damage, but I've got a lot of HP investment in this Altaria. I don't need much speed. Um, I think the speed here, once I get to plus one, this is enough to outspeed. And upon, if I get to plus two, it just outspeeds any Scarfer he has on his team. So if I get to plus two, I outspeed his whole team. And realistically, I probably just one shot or two shot his whole team. And there's nothing he can do um, to, to stop that unless he has Intimidate more while and just switches it in and out. And even then, 
Altaria gets coverage in Fire Blast or Earthquake. Now I'm running Earthquake because I am physically setting up, and obviously if he wants to play that game with me, that's fine. I'll kill things regardless. Um, if, even if I kill just one or two things while he plays that Switch game, that gives me the advantage. I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, Altaria just sits here really nicely. And I've just realised my Altaria has more bulk, especially defensive, than my Rungus does in this state. And then obviously when it Mega Revolves, it gets even bulkier and it gets stronger. Now this is regular Altaria, so that's a bit of a shame. You can't see Mega Altaria stats here. But um, yeah, like I said, if you look at his draft, he really hasn't got anything that can actually um, you know, deal with this too well and can't actually take hits from this thing. So I think realistically, while I've got set up on Celesteela, and this uh, Altaria, I probably didn't need the setup on Celesteela. I think offensive Celesteela is probably better than defensive in this matchup because um, it can just punch holes in his team. I definitely think Altaria is probably my wink on this game. Um, if he hasn't got Will O Wisp on his, um, what's it called, Sableye, then that's setup fodder. If he hasn't got anything that can do, say, like 50, half to my uh, Altaria um, on Blue Score, then setup fodder. Or, you know, if he has Toxic, that might be a bit of an issue. Probably still set up on it, um, but I just won't be able to potentially get, you know, the late game clean up. Might just get a few kills and then have to pick things up with the rest of my team. Um, things that could be an issue are the Sylveon. You know, if he has got a Choice Scarf, say, uh, Infernape, again, locks himself into Flare Blitz, can sack off the Celesteel or my um, uh, Amoongus, and then set up on that thing with this. Um, you know, there's loads of setup opportunities for this thing, and Earthquake Return is literally all I need to, to, to go through his team. Um, so that's the team builder, really, guys. Um, oh, actually, and sorry, the bulk. Uh, no, I've already gone over the EVs, haven't I? I've gone the EVs. 92 is enough to outspeed the um, on max attack for power and uh, just the rest of the HP for some bulk to set up those dragon dancers. So, yeah, that's the team for week one. I think I've decided that I will include this in the same video as the battle, so I will see you guys momentarily for the actual battle which took place uh, against Ben. Okay, guys, so here we are with uh, the week one game. Um, as you can see, Ben has decided to bring the Rotom Mo, Gliscor, Infernape, Azumarill, Sableye, which is Mega, obviously, and the Sylveon. Now, um, was expecting the Gliscor, Infernape, Azumarill, Mega, Sableye. Um, Sylveon was a bit iffy. Um, I wasn't too sure that was going to be bought, to be honest, based on my team, the Celesteela. Um, being there in the Nihilego as well. Um, and then there's also the Rotom Mo, which I understand why he's got that, because actually Rotom Mo does a lot of damage to my Slowbro, um, which stops a lot of his other mons. So I, I understand that. However, I'm not sure why he bought that over Celebi. So um, most of the team is what I expected. The Zoom Roll is there, and I am terrified, because if it is Belly Drum like I fear, it could be, then uh, the, the, the game could be enough over straight away which is really scary um, but we've got this on slow um, I'll talk over my plays for some reason showdown has swapped me to the other side so keep an eye on this half um, if, if you want to know what I'm doing uh, if you want to know more what Ben's doing then you know what watch this side that, that's your thing um, but I will link Ben's side of the, uh, the battle in the description below as well and what I also forgot to mention was I'll leave a pokey paste um, of my team down in the uh, description as well if you skip the team builder. Um, I'll try and remember to leave a timestamp as well, although it's a bit late because you're here now, so you've either watched the team builder or looked for the battle. So, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's just get into this game. So, um, he's going to lead off with Rotom Mo, and I'm going to lead off with my Landorus. Now, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to outspeed this thing. Um, actually, turns out he's Choice Scarf with Willow. Now, at the time I thought, well, shit, that's really quite bad um, for me, uh, because Lando could do a lot of damage to his team. But I got my rocks up and I was, uh, you know, looking over it and thinking, like, crap, that's that's bad. Initially I thought, shit, I'm burnt. I didn't actually process the fact that meant his choice scarf throat because I'm max speed Landorus. Um, and I was like, you know what? I only ever really need this thing for rocks and U-turn in this matchup. Um, Z-Fly would have been nice, obviously, because it would kill... Literally, <sighs> Sylveon, Infernape. Well, it'll kill the Sylveon if it's not Fizz Death or if it's not defensive at all. It'll kill Infernape, probably kill Azumarill, do a lot to Rotom if it doesn't kill it, and it would do a lot to make a Sableye as well. So I was like, I was a bit annoyed that Z Fly is gone, but actually thinking about it, U turn is all I need because I've got so many other mons which can do damage to his team that he's bought. So I know he's scarfed, so he has to hard switch here or he has to just stay in with Willow. 
Either way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get initiative, so I'm going to click U-turn, I'm going to get the slow U-turn, and slow U-turn, um, or Volt Switch um, in, in Draft is incredible, because it does just shift momentum to you. Um, so, Ben does have to switch out here, and I get to see he gets into Gliscor, which means I'm going straight out into my Slowbro. Um, as you can see, U-turn does absolutely nothing because of the burn, and uh, I think I gauge from this is like his death, um, or if not fully, it's very a fairly defensive Gliscor. Um, Ben does bring in the Sylveon here because he's obviously scouting for the Ice Beam and I do click it and it doesn't do that much. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's just a normal Sylveon. So I go into my Celesteela because it's like the well is the safest switch in the world, except he gets a crit hyper voice. Now in the long run this means my self opportunity with Celesteela is a lot more limited now. Um, so at this point I'm like, well, I know I'll take another hit. He's life orb as well, which I wasn't expecting, but it makes sense because it means he can hit my um, Slowbro with Life Orb uh, pixelated, uh, what's it called, Hyper Voice, um, and he also has this uh, Life Orb Psy Shock, so if he's modest, he's going to be doing a lot of damage, but if he is modest, um, he might be running a bit of HP in this thing, and not speed. Now I'm a fairly speedy Celesteeler in terms of Celesteelers, um, because I did want that to my setup to outspeed a lot of the rest of his team, so there's actually a good chance I might outspeed him here. And because I know how well he took the Ice Beam, I know he had a bit of HP investment, so I was like, okay, is he going to have the speed? Because there's not much point in having speed, because he'll outspeed a Moongoose and Slowbro no matter what. Um, he'd need a lot of speed to outspeed my Altaria. Um, probably full, which I don't think he'd have. He wouldn't be able to outspeed uh, Landorus, he wouldn't be able to outspeed Rabombi, something that he's probably going to have more HP than speed. So, I do stay in knowing that pretty much I get a free Heavy Slam here um, without any kind of drawbacks, because I'll either live a hit if I'm slower, or I'm going to be faster and kill this thing if he stays in. Um, so I'm going to stay in, and I'm going to click the Heavy Slam, and down goes this uh, Sylveon. Which is really nice. Um, and as you get the attack boost, so Ben is kind of forced here to go into his... Well, he's not forced to go into his Rotom, though. Um, he might think I'm Choice Scarfed, which is a fair assumption to make, to be honest. Because um, he doesn't know much about the Semper Chain, and he said to me, um, it was either during or after the game, that he's only ever really seen bulky set of sealers, and that's what he was expecting, which is why he left in his um, Sylveon. So I'm, I don't know his sets, but I'm expecting he probably had like hidden power, electric, or fire, maybe? Um, or even ice? I don't know. I don't think HP ice would kill me. Electric may have killed me? I don't know. I haven't done the calcs. Um, HP fire, I have a lot of Kaberi, so that wouldn't have killed me anyway. So I don't know what movie clicked, so I don't know whether the speed actually mattered or not. Um, but he brings in the Rotom, which is absolutely fine with me, because now he's burnt my Landorus, um, and I know he's Scarfed. Landorus is like my go-to switch in every single time this thing comes in. Because if he tries to Volt Switch, he loses momentum, I get a slow U-turn off. Um, if he clicks Leaf Storm, I should be able to take a hit and then probably take another one, um, purely because he's not a boosting item for his special attack, and it's only neutral. It's a strong move, sure, and I am an offensive Landorus, um, but he doesn't have Rock Stuff or anything, and Burn only does 6%. So I should be able to get another U-turn, or even just click the Z5 button and just do some damage to something. So I'm going to make that play, there's no need for me to actually lose my Celesteel yet, because I could still use it on the Mega Sableye. Um, <clears throat> he does click Volt Switch here, um, and he can't switch out, so he now has to hard switch again, and then I get, this is where I get to click U-turn again, and get the momentum back. And he's going to go to the Gliscor every time, which is fair enough, because I think that's what most people would do um, in a matchup of Gliscor and Landorus, um, and I'm just going to go straight back into my Slowbro. Now, I've revealed Ice Beam at this point, so I'm pretty much uh, uh, expecting him to go into his uh, Azumarill or Mega Sableye. So I believe I'm going to click Scald here because I don't think I don't know if Scald will kill, but I really don't expect him to keep Glitch scoring because he needs it for the Celesteela and the uh, Landorus, especially considering he's now realised my Celesteela is offensive. Um, he might need it to try and stall me out with some things, for example. And because I'm weak, he, if he has Stone Edge, he'll be able to probably two-shot me anyway. And if he gets Stealth Rocks up, even better for him, because that'll help weaken the Salus Dealer. So, um, he's going to switch out, and he's going to go into Sableye. So I do believe I click Scald, thinking, okay, well, if he goes into a Zoom Roll, there's a chance for Burn. If he goes into the... He won't bring in the Rotom, because I haven't revealed Ice Beam. And if he goes into the Infernate, that'll do a lot of damage. So Scald actually does a decent amount to that Sableye. He goes for the knockoff here, and he knocks off my Rebombi's Choice Scarf. And I'm not upset by this at all, because I outspeed his whole team, unless he's got Choice Scarf and Infernate. Now, Ben makes a misplay here, um, and he realises this, so... Don't go commenting anything saying, you know, he's, he's made an issue here, uh, he's made an error there, because he, he realised that. Um, 
the crit really sucked. Sorry, I just minimised to Discord. Um, the crit really sucked. That's true. If he scarfed, he would have been able to revenge my Rabombi. However, I would have just gone into Slowbro, and then, you know, we could have played the game. If he goes into Rotom, I go into Landorus and, and, and things like that. So, potentially, it doesn't matter, but I think it made things a lot easier for me. Um, so, the fact he switched in the Infernape was a misplay. Ben acknowledges this, and... Um, if we go on from there, the crit sucks. And now Rabombi's inside. If you look at his team, he hasn't got a switch into Moonblast, really. Um, if he is not especially defensive here, I think Moonblast has a chance to kill. Um, but there's not really much he can do to me. Um, unless Because if he has Acrobatics, he has Night so it's not going to be much. Um, if he has Earthquake, I believe I resist it, so I don't think that'll kill me. Um, but I think I'm going to put U-turn here, because I have... A safe switch into slow bro anyway, um, and U-turn is just nice for the extra chip damage. Um, so I am going to click U-turn. There's no point in me risking Moonblast at this point, I don't think. Um, in case, actually, no, I do click Moonblast, um, but he does click Protect actually. And I think this is then when I think actually there's no point in me losing Rabombi because I need it for the Mega Sableye. Um, Mega Sableye is in range of dying to Moonblast at this point, thanks to the damage it's taken from Scald and Rocks. So I'm just going to bring in Slowbro because there's really not much reason not to, and actually I do more damage to him than he does to me. Um, he can't stay in here. Again, I'm going to click Scald because A, burn chance, and B, I don't think he'll go into Rotom thinking I might Ice Beam again. And um, I'm going to hard switch out here into my Rabombi because I'm expecting him to uh, click a Dark type move or recover. But actually, he switches it into the Rotom um, at this point, which is fine. I'm going to get back into my Landorus because Landorus is my switch into this Rotom mode every single time. He clicks in power, I think, ah, oh, if he's in power ice, that's a bit of a bummer, but then I can just play around that and go into Celesteela and win. Um, however, he's not hidden power ice, so I'm going to go and click U-turn, uh, and this is my opportunity to set up with my Altair, because it's not hidden power ice. I don't know what hidden power it is, um, and I never actually found out, but here he goes into a zoom roll, um, and I click Dragon Dart, so I know I'm now at enough uh, speed to outspeed this thing if it's scarf. I click return and uh, it just drops. So no crit or anything like that, it just drops. And that is huge. That was the one one that could have salvaged it for him. At this point, I'm really comfortable. He brings in the Gliscor because nothing else in his team can take a hit, which is understandable. If he'd have bought in the Rotom, he could have actually will me. Um, I would have switched into the Lionel obviously. Um, but I do click the return. It doesn't quite kill. And because he's clicking Earthquake, I've seen how much it does. I can set up a second Dragon Dance. I've got Roost on this thing, so I can actually uh, Roost up. But there's really no need for me to do it because he now just dies to return, plus two return at everything. He acknowledges that at this point and, well, sadly for him, and good enough for me, um, I do just proceed to kill the rest of his mons. Uh, Altaria getting four kills this game. And I do get the 6-0 win, so a great start for me. Um, week one of this NSTL, obviously. Felt quite bad for obviously winning 6-0 because Ben is my friend. Um, and it's not nice sixing a friend, but I want to win this league, being quite blunt, and if if I can get a 6-0, I'll play a 6-0. It's not like I even played it stally or anything. I'd feel a lot worse if it was like stall 6-0. Um, like, you know, toxic spikes, toxic, protect, all that stuff. I feel a lot worse. But you know, Altari got its opportunity to sell, and that's just how the game went. So good game, Ben. Um Ben's not too familiar with seventh gen, so I have said I'll help him going forward. Um, so hopefully the results do pick up for him. So I would like to see him do well this season and, you know, learn the Gen 7 draft meta. He hasn't played since Auras, so it's understandable why. He might not understand what Celesteela does, what Robombi does, what Nihilego does, what Mega Altaria, while it was in that generation. Um, it's not used that often, so he might not understand what that does. Um, and he might not understand Z moves either as well. But, like, that Rotom was really quite scary. It kind of threw me a bit at the start. I wasn't expecting Choice Scarfed because, you know... Um, non-choice scarf would do really well against Slowbro and obviously will switch out against my Boongus and get himself some uh, initiative. Um, it was a good game nevertheless and you know it'll be something Ben can learn from but like I said I'll help him going forward and it's a good start for me uh, this season so if you guys did uh, enjoy this battle make sure you leave a like, uh, leave a comment on what you thought about the battle and the team prep and what you think about the draft in general. If you do want to check out the draft analysis that is on my channel uh, like I said I've left a poke paste to my team below if you want to go and look at that. Um, and I'll leave a link to Ben's Twitter, YouTube, 
battle, whatever I remember to put in there. Because um, he's a cool dude, you should go follow him, and he's also really good at Overwatch. And he will carry you to Masters for free, like he's trying to do for me. So, um, yeah, cheers for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week. Um, I don't know what my week two game is, um, but you'll see when the video is live, I guess. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.